care, but it's in pretty care. And they also have them rolling Jupiter right. I want to talk a little bit about JP's controls and all the features that it has. I'm also going to talk about how to initialize an Apache on a Jupiter right so that you can start from the very beginning. Alright, I actually have this powered on now. I'm going to uh, start with the controls over here, explain a little bit about those. Other controls here deal with the uh, amount of the pitch or the fil uh, filter frequency being uh, routed to the pitch bend here. You can have that on or off. You can also have that routed to the uh, frequency of the filter as well. So the pitch bend will deal with that. Okay. And then we also have the LFO modulation switch here. They deal with the same thing, uh, the uh, oscillator pitch or filter frequency. And you can modulate those. And have that on or off. This is how I normally have it set. Alright, and what's that for Portamento? Which is uh, polyphonics, I believe. And you can have it set for on, off, or upper only. Upper only is obviously useful for splitting it, so that if you have an ARP down here, or a bass, or a string patch, uh, that will not be affected by Portamento at all. That'll be just the upper only. Alright. And here is our master tune uh, knob here, a plus or minus 50 cents, our tune switch. Our volume and balance. This should say lower and upper, but it's been worn off uh, from age. Alright, and then we have <coughs> our arpeggiator here, with the clock source um, that can be switched to external or internal. If you're going to be using this with uh, an external uh, device, like the 808 or another sequencer, you would use a line here and plug that line back here and that port right there. If you have the other uh, cable that would work, then obviously that would work. Uh, if you don't, like me, I'd just use a regular uh, quarter inch line. And that will send the CB uh, control voltages to 808 and 808 will control JP there. Alright, internal obviously is uh, Jupiter 8. Alright. And our epidator rate is at the very bottom here is 1 hertz all the way to 20 hertz. Our LFO is flashing uh, crazy there, right there. <laughs> Slow that down there. It is nice that it does have uh, a reference so that you can see exactly how fast it's set to. Um, the rate of the LFO all the way he down here at the bottom you will hardly ever see it flashing there. Is there a point there of 5 hertz? There it is. Very slowly there. Extremely slow LFO rate. Which is excellent for routing the filter to it. Alright, and all the way up here to 40 hertz. Which is extremely fast and you probably cannot see it blinking on here because it's so fast. Alright. There we go. Okay. And moving on to our delay time, all the way here at the bottom is 0 seconds to 4 seconds of delay time. We have our waveforms. Also, we have sample and hold random circuit there. LFO, uh, VCO uh, modulator there. LFO ENV1. Both VCO2 or 1. Both of the modulation. All the way here at the bottom is a square wave, and the farther up you go, closer to 10, the more narrow the pulse width will get. You can have pulse width router 2 and LFO, manual or EMV1. Cross modulation. Gotta have that if you want the ring modulation FM type sound. For uh, adding side bands there. We have our VCO1 range from 16 to 2. All of our usual waveforms. Oscillator sync for syncing two uh, oscillators together. Um, it's good for eliminating uh, beats and a sound if you have a very rich uh, sound there with a lot of uh, waveform the frequencies going on and you don't want the uh, beats to be going on within the waveform you sync these together so they're real smooth so it forces one to sync to the other alright fine tune and more waveforms, we have noise on this uh, oscillator as well Okay, and a source mix which deals with mixing uh, the or balancing the volume levels of VCO one and two, and actually the I guess signal strength of each one. 
more so than volume. Hitler HPF, which is non-resident, and 60 dB per octave slope. Our VCF, cut off ricochet, and resonant, it is a resonant filter, obviously. Okay, and our 2 pole and 4 pole, 24 and 12 dB per octave slope there. EMV mod with the EMV 1 and 2, and our LFO and key follow for VCF, and our VCA. And here is where you would set the LFO for the VCA. You have a setting of 0 to 3. Okay, and here is our two uh, complete 4 stage EMVs. Gotta have those. And both of them are actually very similar in their uh, times, I guess you could say. Uh, remember that the sustain level is the only level parameter here. Everything else is a time parameter. And for our attack time on both of these, um, it's one second to five seconds. Our decay time is one uh, millisecond to ten seconds. Our sustain level is zero to one hundred percent. And our release time is going to be one millisecond to ten seconds on both of them. And here we have our key follow on or off, and our polarity for the EMV one being normal and inverted or upside down. There's the EMV two. Same thing applies to those. And but there is no uh, polarity there, just that one. And then we have our key follow on or off. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, play one of the keys here, so you can hear exactly how this patch is sounding. This is still gonna be set for the initialized uh, square wave patch. <laughs> So very basic. It's a good uh, starting point. As our square wave has auto modus only, so you can make some good stuff there. Or set it to a saw wave and have even an auto harmonics. Add a little bit of a uh, portamento there, put it on solo, and you have a lead sound. And we can actually just slow that down a little, and then we have our. I think we'd use our. Modulation switch there. Got some modulation. There's some crazy noises there. Alrighty. So that is the basics of JP there. Left side controls, everything else. Plenty of controls to keep you happy for a long time. <laughs> Alright. Also, I guess uh, since there's a little bit of time left, I can show you the back side. Awesome machine here. It's beautiful. All right, there is this awesome power supply switch. Nice bright and orange. The heat sink that gets extremely hot. Very very hot there. Okay, and we have our memory protect, and all of our tape memory uh, switches there. Our CD and gates. And they're painted. This is where uh, the 808 is plugged in, or any other um, Sacred Sword drum machine uh, that can deal with uh, CV voltages. Control voltages there. Our external controls. And here is our audio output there. I have it in the mix for right now. Um, but if you haven't have enough lines, you can put it upper and lower. Set the level there. XLRs and the headphone jack. Actually, the headphone jack is just an individual amplifier unit within itself. Alright. And there's a little bit about Mr. JP. Awesome, Roland Jupiter 8.